Hello, we've just hit 100 subscribers, so today I want to do something very exciting. That is, I'm going to attempt to extract 100% of the solubles in the coffee bean. Let me explain. So recently I posted this graph here. So what this graph shows is the correlation between the extraction yield and the grind setting when you brew with the AeroPress pour over style method. And if you haven't seen it, link is down below and also here somewhere. And what really surprises me is that all of the brews that are on this graph are from different coffee origins, different roasts, different processes. What surprises me is that the correlation is really strong and the dependence is almost linear. And I've definitely noticed it in my brews as well as in the video where I shared the recipe. What it suggests is that the puck percolation air press method uh, used for pour over style is very consistent, reliable as well as predictable in terms of extraction yields. So today I want to test this claim, this hypothesis. And uh, I'm going to use a different coffee from a different roaster. This is Ethiopia Gucci, natural process, uh, light roast. And I'm going to grind really fine to try to extract every single soluble in the coffee bean. Now, will it taste good? I don't know. It might be pretty bitter. I've actually brewed at finer grind settings as well as at shorter ratios and I got pretty high extraction before but they all taste really bitter because the ratio was shorter so the coffee was more concentrated. Today I just want to use my regular recipe which is 70 grams of coffee bean to 250 grams of water and we should get around 225 grams of finished brew. Uh, as for the grind setting, I actually want to go as fine as 0 0.5 on GP6 special. So yeah, let me just grind this coffee and I'll come back. Now at this grind setting, I expect that I'll get something like 24% extraction yield, judging from the graph that I've shown you earlier. One thing that I'm aware of is that it can easily get channeled. So we'll try to solve this problem later, but for now, let's just try to brew this one. I'll attempt it as usual. And now we pour. Two hundred and fifty-one gram. I expect that it will not brew easily because of the very Fine grind setting. Oh, first drip is here. Of course, I'll try to aim for one minute of drain time, but it is not guaranteed. The drippings are very slow, as you can see. At this fine grind setting, I wouldn't expect it to be less than two minutes of drain time, because there's a lot of resistance. Calling it now, we'll see some dark spots on the paper filter which will suggest that there is some channeling happening here. The puck resistance is actually decreasing right now, so it means that a lot of stuff has already been extracted. Good one, good one. So we have 231 grams of coffee here. So let's stir this. Oh, it smells so... Amazing! Oh, it smells very, very aromatic. I actually want to taste it before I measure, so cheers. Wow, it is so bitter! Oh my god, it is like pure lemon zest, if I can describe it as that. If I were to rate it from 1 to 5 in terms of bitterness, I would say that it's 4 maybe out of 5. Of course it's bitter, but it is also pretty acidic. Cat? Hey cat! My cat here just started meowing for some reason. Let me film video. I'll come back to you. So yeah, the acidity is really intense, 
like you would expect with acidity from something like a lungo it is a very interesting brew the body is pretty heavy and the acidity is strong there there's still some sweetness and the stringency is um it, it is quite low i i, I would say like 1.5 out of 5 this, the acidity is like 3 out of 5 the sweetness is 1.5 I think in terms of aromas and flavor it's like berries but with lemon zest wow what an amazing coffee actually <laughs> it's not for the bitterness let us inspect the puck first and then we will predict if we hit 24% extraction yield well 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 you can see a hole in the center here so I think that the channeling happened here this is the under extracted area but it is pretty uniform for some reason even though there is a dark spot here all in all the puck is pretty okay you can you can you can see it on the puck the dark spot here the under extracted area i think that the main issue stems from the aeropress cap because of this circle on the center that's the root of the channeling so yeah let's measure our extraction and see how much did we extract so I'm editing video and what I've noticed is really interesting. When I examined the puck, the puck was pretty dry, I would say, and the mass of the finished cup is like 231 grams, which is a little bit more than usually I get from this uh, method, which shows that the finer you grind, the less liquid is retained in the puck. And it kind of makes sense because the mechanism by which the liquid retains in the coffee grounds is because, well, coffee bean has structure. It is a porous material, which means that the water can get trapped in the grounds. But when you grind it really fine, there is almost to no structure left. Therefore, you get a cup that has higher mass than you usually get when you grind at coarser grounds. I find it really interesting, so yeah, I just wanted to mention it here. I also noticed it in one of my previous videos where I brewed with the ultra-fine Turkish coffee, which led to some aeropress soups which had more mass than I expected. That's really interesting, I think. So the Briggs value is actually around 2.2, 2.1, 2 2.2, so Wow! I've measured the Briggs value and it is around 2.1, 2.2. Because the scale on the Briggs refractometer is really small, the accuracy of the measurement is not that high, but the results are still on the trend that I've shown you earlier on the graph. So 2.1 to 2.2 Briggs is actually around 24 to 25% extraction yield. So we did it. It is still so bitter, oh my god. And I should mention that the puck percolation aeropress method is a low agitation if not no agitation method of brewing. Even though the extraction is very high, the stringency is pretty low because there's almost no agitation. Of course, the flow through the puck will create some agitation, some local agitation, but it is uh, not enough to push out the stringency to the finished cup. What I'm tasting here is a lot of aromas, a lot of pleasant acidity, as well as a lot of bitterness. So the takeaway from this experiment is this. The puck percolation method is very sensitive to the grind setting. Across different beans, different roasts, different origins, different processes. So you can adjust the grind setting just a little bit and change the profile of your finished cup. So yeah, around 25% extraction, that's pretty high. It's not like 100% of the solubles in the coffee because um, coffee beans contain around 30 to 33%. One third of the coffee beans are solubles. And this is 25% extraction. So it's like 70, 80% of the solubles have been extracted. So still pretty high. Wow, 100 subscribers, that's a lot of people. So thank you so much for watching and subscribing to, to my channel. I hope that this little experiment was interesting. And if you haven't seen the Aeropress pour over style recipe, check the links down below. In the description, I'm working on the ultimate 
Aeropress soup recipe, which is the recipe for brewing espresso strength coffee with Aeropress. And I've actually shown it before on this channel, so if you haven't seen it, check out the video here. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button so you'll get notified when I eventually post the Aeropress soup video. And as always, thank you for watching and see you again.